In high school, you would have learned that acceleration is a constant value. But in many cases, in fact, most cases, acceleration isn't constant. It is often constantly changing. Take, for example, a driver presses down on the accelerator pedal. The car accelerates, but its acceleration actually increases. What about a skydiver? A skydiver would seem to fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. But as he falls, the air resistance increases and therefore his acceleration actually decreases. We have a change of acceleration. This leads us to an understanding of a new term, the jerk. Now before we start, if you like my videos, please consider buying me a coffee and remember to press the subscribe button and the bell so that you get my latest updates. So let's get started. The jerk, or sometimes also referred to as the jolt, is the rate of change of acceleration. Let's look at it from a graphical perspective. So what we say is we have an acceleration that can be, for example, increasing like so. And what about the jerk graph? Well, in this case, I have a constant value for the jerk or the jolt. As a result, because it's the rate of change of acceleration, the unit is the meters per second cubed. So that basically means that the jerk is equal to the derivative of the acceleration with respect to time, which of course means we have the second derivative of the velocity with respect to time, which of course is therefore the third derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So why is this all important? Well, we are terribly sensitive to changes in acceleration. We have a thing called the semilunar canals, which is part of our vestibular system, which is all about our balance. And they're very sensitive to changes in acceleration. In other words, jerk. So take, for example, you driving in a car with a seasoned driver. They take great care in changing their acceleration and you get a smooth experience. Whereas a beginner driver is very jerky. That is, their accelerations aren't changing constantly, and you're very sensitive to it. But in transportation systems, this is taken into consideration. Take, for example, the design of curves in roads. You would think that entering a curve, it would be circular, but in fact it's not. It's a clothoid, and this is designed to reduce the amount of jerk. Similarly speaking, if we are looking at roller coasters, they're not circular loops, they are clothoids. Again, reducing the amount of jerk being applied to the rider and therefore a much more pleasurable experience, so to speak. Now, I'll be producing a video all about clothoids at a later stage, so watch out. Another application is the design of delicate instruments, say for example, satellites. Satellites generally experience changes in acceleration, for example, such as going into different orbits. Again, systems are designed to reduce the amount of jerk so that it minimizes the wear and tear on these delicate components. So are there now equations of motion where jerk is involved? Yes, there are, and therefore we're going to derive those three equations of motion involving jerk. So let's start. We say the jerk is equal to the derivative of A with respect to time. Rearranging this, what we get is that dA is equal to J dt. We now integrate both sides. So the integral of from A naught to A of dA is equal to the integral from t equals zero to t of J dt. That gives us a minus a naught is equal to j t. Rearranging this, we get a is equal to a naught plus j t. And so there's our first equation of motion. Now you probably see already a pattern, considering that a is the derivative of v, and jerk of course is the derivative of a, we have a similar format from our equations of motion where acceleration is constant. So let's see if we can see the same effect for our next equation of motion. This time we'll start that the acceleration is the derivative of v with respect to time. Again, we do the same pattern. Now we integrate both sides. A of course is a naught plus gt. And so we finally get Again, our equation of motion has a similar format to the situation where this acceleration is a constant value. V, the derivative of x, equals v naught 
our derivative of x naught plus a naught t plus a half j t squared. So let's put it over here. And now our third equation of motion. We start by saying v is equal to dx dt. Rearranging this, we get dx is equal to v dt. Again, we integrate both sides. And remember, our v now is all of this. And we get, finally, let's put that over here. So as you can see now, what we have is a linear relationship in our first equation, a square or quadratic relationship in our second equation, and we have a cubic function in terms of time for our third equation. So now let's examine the graphs. So if we have a constant positive jerk, then we have a constant acceleration. In this case, I'm starting at A equaling zero like this. We have a parabola like so, and a cubic function in this case for X. Similarly, what if I had a negative jerk like this? Well, in this case, my slope for my acceleration time graph would look like this. In this case, I would have a graph that looks like so, and of course we have a cubic function like this. Again, this is all dependent on what my initial conditions are. We can shift any of these graphs up or down depending on our initial conditions. And so what we can now see is that we have our first derivative of x to give us the velocity, our second derivative gives us the acceleration, and our third derivative gives us the jerk or the jolt. Now, can we go further? Can my jerk be constantly changing? And yes, it can, and that is called the snap. So the snap is actually the derivative of jolt, or what we say is the fourth derivative of the displacement. So what we get is d to the fourth of x. Can I go further? Yes, that's the crackle. Similarly, this becomes my fifth derivative of displacement. And colloquially, you can guess what the next one would be, and that is the pop, which is our sixth derivative of displacement. Now these are just colloquially known and most times you will just be dealing with situations where we have a constant jerk. So that introduces the concept of jerk. Please like, share and subscribe and put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.